It was an exciting session and it ended as expected with our president-elect showing himself in an explosion around MSCs. It was, it was great, right? I mean, did you enjoy that, Raquelle? Yes, I really enjoyed the, uh, all the speeches and uh, also how Jack uh, uh, chaired the session and uh, how his um, uh, suggestion of using a fresh MSC is going to be uh, applied in clinical trials. So I think that he is very happy about uh, all well, the results and uh, the use of a fresh MSC. I'm not sure if the question about fresh MSCs came from the audience or was something that our moderator, the chair, actually took because it's one of his preferred topics. Um, my opinion is slightly different, but anyway, that's the good thing about being in a society uh, that cares for cell therapy, different opinions based on evidence. And we did talk about a lot of evidence there. I'll tell you. I'll tell you my key takeaways from from the discussion. Um, first of all, Patricia actually uh, showed us some of the mechanism of actions uh, where we are, and I liked her conclusion. MS is for COVID. Just do it. Uh, very directive. Very directive. And, and and it is true. I mean, we saw a lot of good data. Probably the key message I would take away is that MSCs do work. The question is how to optimize the function of the MSCs and how to optimize the patients that get, get the best benefit from the MSCs. There was really the discussion from Tony, from Silvio, from, from the others. It works, we need to optimize. And interestingly enough, I think it was abstract number, number, one actually, which is professionalize the MSCs for an effect, which is which is good. Now then Maroon, he went through a lot of the existing clinical trials and reviewed it, uh, which is an important, uh, uh, an important uh, review and status. It's impressive how the field has responded and escalated the number of MSC trials in, uh, in, in COVID. I mean, he said that out of the 176, 147 are with MSCs in uh, in uh, COVID IRDS. So a lot of work and the vibrancy of our field, cell and gene therapy field, responding to COVID like like others. Very nicely, he did a SWOT uh, in terms of uh, the strengths, the opportunities, then the weaknesses of, of what we're doing. It goes all the way from the number of trials, the manufacturing, the models, but also the challenges that we're facing in the in in the data. And then Tony reviewed um, the, the different studies, and it was interesting to see how he reviewed the study of mesoblast. Um, and, 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 and it's impressive, the detail, if we compare what he said plus what uh, Silvia said in terms of uh, the immunology of the response of the body, namely the age as well, and the effect of, of, the, of, the, of the MSCs. So, Overall, a very exciting blend of multiple pieces of data. I don't know, what do you think, uh, um, Raquel, about, about the, the, the plenary and what did you take away that excites you? Yes, I'm really uh, surprised from the huge amount of results that uh, um, we accumulate in only one year, if you uh, think that it is only one year. Um, I firmly believe that uh, the pathogenesis of the tissue injury um, evolve in different stages. So I believe that MSC, that for sure are the uh, main um, the, the leading uh, cell population that uh, uh, can be used in uh, uh, the setting of COVID-19 um, may work differently in the different stage of COVID-19 disease and uh, tissue injury. So I believe that we should identify first the windows of opportunity to treat these patients with MSC. And also 
uh, they, uh, to stratify the patients um, uh, uh, for uh, age, for uh, comorbidities, uh, uh, to uh, try to select those uh, right patients and the right stage of the disease where MSC may be very, very um, more uh, efficacious uh, in comparison to the other stage of the disease of other uh, demographic and clinical settings. So um, uh, we need uh, more uh, info. And uh, from uh, the, the cell uh, uh, suspension, um, we need the further investigation to understand if we really need to uh, license the cells before the treatment, before the administration in the patient, or the cells become licensed in, in, in the body, directly in, in the body. And so we have uh, several points, a very uh, important point to, uh, to, to, to make this therapeutic strategy uh, successfully. I, um, I really appreciate the technological innovation uh, presented um, uh, that you can uh, uh, fix mesenchymal stem cells and uh, allow uh, the uh, bi bioactive molecules and extracellular vesicle to go through the uh, blood circulation of, of the patients. This is an extraordinary uh, solution, uh, although uh, it is uh, um, only for a very um, niche of patients because those who have, who have uh, RDS and uh, acute kidney uh, injury. So this is a specific uh, setting where this new technology may be uh, uh, used. So a, a, lot, a lot of information, a, a lot of key, uh, key points, but uh, one um, Key message is that MSC are safe. If you, I don't know if you agree with this statement. Well, I, I, I do agree. I mean, we've seen MSCs from different sources, uh, frozen as well as fresh, um, and 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 indeed there is constantly the safety uh, message coming coming through. So I, I fully agree with that. I actually also agree on one other thing, and and. Uh, we're generating evidence and it's important to continue to generate the evidence and use the clinical trials to support what we use. At this point, MSEs are in clinical trials. They are not um, uh, uh, ready for, for, for the treatment and we should continue to generate the evidence that we see is being generated quite, quite extensively. Very, very importantly, you mentioned one thing about the licensing of the MSCs. I, I do believe that what has been shown here demonstrates that several things. First, the cells react to the environment. That's what we see, uh, and that's also, in a way, uh, what, uh, what Rita mentioned. And I, I know we'll have more about that. Interestingly, Rita is kind of uh, immunodialysis, right? It's a dialysis for immune uh, control, which is an interesting concept, but it shows us that the cells read, react, and influence the environment. Is it powerful enough? Needs to be optimized? Clearly, that's where we are, and above all, needs to be part of the clinical trials to show it. The other point that you've made is also relevant because if the cells do that, um, do we let them to learn, get educated, get licensed, in situ or do we professionalize them before and get them ready to hit the ground running for a specific therapeutic objective and i think that's um that's where we need to to go it's the mscs are a fantastic tool um maybe they instead of just do it going with a with a a degree they need to go with also with a phd going in they need to know they need to adapt but they need to start the job with training out 
So I would I would support licensing them, even gene modify them uh, before they go in for a specific therapeutic effect. And again, this needs to come to clinical trials and and and, and show. So um, and and then finally the other point that uh, is. Uh, not all patients are, are the same, and we need to optimize, again, in the context of clinical trials, the design, the inclusion criteria and the patient target population, and eventually other medications that we got to use together. And I think that's the point that Tony may, made and Silvio also, also, also made. So a clear, fantastic group of presentations that actually showed us, as you said, MS is safe, as I believe, MSCs can read the environment uh, and, can, and, and can work. And as we know, they need to be optimized in multiple, in multiple aspects to really harness that, uh, that effect that uh, uh, we've, we've, been, we've been talking about. Um, so any, any, any comments in addition to that? Or, or shall we ask others to jump in onto, onto, onto it? Uh, no further uh, comments, uh, uh, and uh, mm, uh, just to say that uh, a new hope for the development of uh, uh, more uh, targeted uh, therapies uh, is uh, mm, uh, coming. Um, now I am very excited to hear the interview of Andres uh, Casedo, our early stage professional reporter, exactly to Rita Barcia to get more detail about uh, this uh, technology and the study she presented. Hello everyone, my name is Andres Caicedo, I'm your ISCT TV host uh, today and it's with a great pleasure that I will have the opportunity to interview one of our uh, uh, greatest presenters, scientists, Rita Barcia. Rita, uh, she's, uh, she's a Vice President of Research and Development and Sentient Biotechnologies. Uh, Rita, could you tell us uh, a little bit uh, about yourself, uh, how you pass from academia to the, the, to the companies that you've been a, a part of, uh, such as Farmies, such as EC Bio, and now Sentin. What motivates you to take this, uh, these challenging uh, steps? Yeah, so hi, everybody. Thank you for having me on ISCT TV. Very excited. Um, so, you know, I did the normal academic career. I did my PhD and then um, I came to Boston for my postdocs. And I did about four and a half years of postdocs here at Harvard. And um, it was a wonderful experience. I gained a lot of scientific knowledge, but I, I really knew that at the end, um, academia wasn't uh, right for me. I, I wanted to be in therapeutic development and I wanted the structure and the focus that is afforded by doing that in, in the industry setting. Um, it wasn't an easy transition necessarily, I, um, especially because um, I, I wasn't a green card holder um, uh, at that time. So it was a tough transition. So I actually transitioned back to Europe and uh, was looking there for uh, industry um, work and that's where I started. I did a couple of years of monoclonal uh, antibody development and then finally into cell therapy and mesenchymal stem uh, cells where I've been over a decade now. Wow, yeah that comes through to our next question. Part of this last great session which we discovered and understood how far we've gone in bringing solutions and therapies to COVID-19. So um, you work in two amazing abstracts one of them is extracorporeal MSC cell therapy SB101 in severe COVID-19 complicated by acute kidney injury. Um, I have a question about that. Uh, why ex vivo? Is it better than applying MSC directly to the patient? Uh, is it more easy? You have more control of it? Yes, uh, but and so, so before I joined Sentian uh, in Europe, I was in another company developing MSCs from umbilical cord tissues uh, and 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 using that as an infusion product, which which is the common. Um, 
And we were, we had a lot of preclinical programs and we were getting amazing results preclinically. But the truth is when I looked uh, around to uh, companies that were already, or even academic groups that were already in the clinic, the, the, the results just weren't as good. Uh, so the yeah. clinical translation piece was not uh, working very well. And so when I met the, um, uh, the founders of Sentient and I, I realized what they were doing, I, I really thought this, this is a very um, cool way of administering these cells. Um, so what we do at EC Bio, we engineered this way of having the cells uh, in this uh, hollow fiber device outside of the body, hence the ex vivo. And yes, this affords us uh, immense control. It means that we can use significantly higher doses of cells and um, we can have uh, uh, you know, uh, good cell viability, longer therapeutic window. Um, and we could also have a, a, a different way of measuring pharmacology and studying it. So we can actually, by keeping the cells outside of the body, um, we can actually sample from where they are in the micro, in the bio, in the, the hollow fiber, and see what they're doing during treatment, and then correlate that with uh, pharmacodynamic effects that we're seeing in the plasma uh, of the patient. So um, it really is a very novel uh, uh, way that not just of not just of administering. MSCs and overcoming the issues of uh, MSC administration and you know the problem of uh, that we all know of, it's very short-lived they get trapped in the lungs or they disappear off um, but also can really inform on the pharmacology of these uh, amazing cells. Wow this is a great job and, uh, and I'm really enthusiastic about how this is going to move forward maybe in the future is to, to, to being treated outside of our own body then check we out. Have, we, we have lots of plans um, for, 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 for this type of product uh, where it goes beyond what we're just doing right now. But if you can imagine, you know, there are things that we can do outside of the body and then put it back into the patient. So there's lots of uh, variations that we'd like to test in the future too. Wow, that is, that is really amazing. Um, well, now um, moving a little bit forward in, uh, in our interview, uh, your other abstract, large scale manufacturing and processing essay development for HMC in regenerative medicine. Um, as you're working in a consortium, um, how developing a large scale HMC manufacturing process with a deep, uh, with quality focus will impact the cost of the therapy as today MSCs are still expensive to produce and even to use. Yeah, so this is an amazing consortium that we have here. Uh, these are three MSC experts. So we have ourselves, Sentian, which is a, a, a product, therapeutic product developer, Rooster Bio and Gencure. And we, we're all um, you know, experts in MSC. So this is a great project funded by MTech. Uh, and really, we're trying to address two major issues here. One, uh, it, it's that, that lots of uh, MSC um, um, companies uh, struggle with. One is obviously the cost effectiveness of the bat large barge production. And the other one uh, is potency assay development. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. So in terms of the large, um, the scale-up activities, especially for uh, startup small um, biotech companies, it, it's really tough to um, to uh, invest a lot of money in scale-up activities when you're early stage. On the other hand, you know uh, you can't let that uh, go. You have to um, start investing in that before you get to your phase two. So it's a, it's a tough balance um, to, to, to have to deal with. And so we're very appreciative of being able to do this work uh, as, as part of this consortium and with the MTEC support. Fine tune a lot of these large scale processes so that it will become cheaper um, for, for us and other users in the future. In terms of the potency um, assay development, this has become a really big issue in, this, in the field of MSCs. The FDA is really, asking uh, MSC developers to have good ways to measure biological activity. And so at, at Sentient, we've developed a, a, a platform to assess 
um, exactly that. And uh, the project actually encompasses uh, looking at biological activity using this platform of three different sources of MSCs that we've scaled up in the, in the big bioreactors. Um, and then really hoping to um, sort of uh, lay out a, a, a process for how to um, how we can look at potency and develop a good potency assets that again can be used not just by sentient but uh, by other MSC developers as well. So it's a great project and we're very excited and happy to to be leading it. Excellent. I think that uh, yes yeah, part of the, part of working into the development of the field is is uh, is key to move it like in consortia with uh, a lot of uh, people a lot of opinions a lot of capacities in order to uh, set uh, uh, new abilities and to move forward that is amazing congratulations rita for all the work that you're Thank doing you. the consortium that is really amazing uh so how you see the mc's uh, field in the next 10 years well, I, I, I have worked in this field for over 10 years, so I definitely want the next 10 years to be um, very successful and, uh, and, and uh, with more good clinical results and perhaps more market approvals. Um, there's, there aren't a lot of them yet, so I, I definitely like to see that. I do think that the field is moving also towards these second generation uh, products, but MSC based products. You yeah. know, I, I would include ourselves there, uh, though we use naive MSCs. You know, I, I do think our uh, novel engineering approach is, is a different way of delivering the cells. And, but also other uh, people are obviously uh, working with genetically modifying these cells or pre-activating them or even using mitochondria uh, yeah. <laughs> or, um, you know, and, and so, so, you know, uh, you know, putting all, all of those in, in a big bucket of second generation, uh, I do think that we'll be seeing um, that come through more. Um, also, the potential of using these MSCs potentially in the oncology uh, field and, and uh, perhaps as, um, you know, uh, 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 cancer vaccines, uh, we might be seeing that uh, moving uh, as well in the pipeline. Excellent. An amazing future indeed. And uh, hopefully we're going to have the opportunity to, to have you again in the ICCT and meet you as well as an interview because that is very interesting as well. That, uh, and allow me to also contact you. You know, they have this, um, this opportunity to, to talk and to discuss about uh, your amazing work and how MSCs uh, therapies are going to move forward um, and to help us to treat not only uh, infectious diseases such as uh, COVID-19, but others, others that are, are really important for our, uh, uh, for humanity and to, towards answering global needs. That is amazing. Thank you very much, Rita. Thank you, Andres. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow, again, a great, great interest. Interesting in the fact that uh, um, she concluded about the professionalization of MSEs, which is dear to my heart in terms of making them to the next generation. I'm sure we'll see more about that. It's also very interesting, and Jack mentioned it, I knew it before, uh, Rita is Portuguese, which is also very dear to my heart, as you know, so delighted to see this. Uh, um, as, as you know, Raquel, there's quite a few things happening over the next uh, few, few days, um, and I would like to call the attention to everybody about uh, about this ongoing game uh, uh, to win prizes uh, with IACT. I mean, you know, if you go to the different um, places in the, in the, uh, in, the, in the platform uh, and comply and, and perform specific tasks, you can earn points and you get prizes. And indeed already yesterday through that, um, the first and the second prize were awarded. The first prize to Yi Yan Chow from the National University of Singapore, uh, who won um, the first place, which is the registration for ISCT 2022, which we all, fingers crossed, hope to be physically, I mean, presence, uh, even though potentially uh, 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 with a part of the distance. And the second prize, which was won by Veronica Castaneda 
from uh, University Universidad de los Andes in Chile, who got the second place um, in that game and which gave her um, an ISCT membership for 2022. So clearly, do go around, do do those tasks, and you'll be earning earning points. Um, there's a few other news that I would like to. You can do the ISCT 5K run. Uh, you will see news in the in the um, in, in the platform again. Please do check the new ISCT website and. Uh, and uh, do go and see uh, the booths uh, and what has been presented also by our uh, sponsors. And speaking of that, I would like to ask uh, your attention to the symposium from MaxSight, which is going to take place at 10 a.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. for us uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, uh, which will bring uh, industry leaders, researchers, precisely the spirit of sharing the topics uh, within within ISCT. Uh, maybe you want to make some some comments uh, uh, at this point, just before we uh, direct the audience to the next sessions. But uh, yes. um, Raquel? Yes, uh, I would just uh, welcome a question from our past president, John Rasco. Uh, if uh, we believe that uh, it is possible to use uh, MSC outside the clinical trials. And my answer is uh, no, because uh, as uh, every um, uh, therapeutic tool, uh, a novel therapeutic tool that is uh, uh, going to be assessed for the commercialization and for a wide use, we need to uh, go uh, in the narrow uh, path uh, of uh, phase one, phase two, and phase uh, three controlled uh, trials. So I don't know what do you think about Miguel. It goes without saying. Uh, I mean, it's important to generate the data, and we talked about it. It's important to establish the risk benefit, and uh, once that is done, it goes through the regulatory process, and then it's be it's able to use. Now, it is also important that uh, we design those studies properly, and we do them um, in the, in the context of the right way to 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 to, to do it. Uh, and 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 it's in generating that evidence that we will do the service to the patients but also to the product, uh, because then the product is adequately used and it does not uh, um, create misperceptions about the product or misperceptions from, 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 from the patients. Um, I mean, it, it comes in the context of um, unproven cell therapies, which obviously it's not the case here, is actually the proving the cell therapy adequately within the context of well-designed, well-controlled, performed clinical trials that will enable us to have the right risk benefit and the, and the regulatory approval. Um, and, and I think uh, um, the fact that we were able to respond very actively in the field and generating all that, those clinical trials and the data that is coming out is helping us to have the confidence on eventually how it's going to be rightly used in the, in the market. Yes, and it is amazing to see how industry and the academy are going all together in this uh, uh, Road. So finally, I mm, uh, uh, want to remind um, uh, to um, attend the ICT awards and the presidential plenary session beginning at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And um, uh, every, uh, as every year, ICT recognizes uh, uh, recipients of the Career Achievement Award, the Inaugural Mentoring Award, the first time this year, and the Innovation Award. This will be broadcast in the live auditorium. In conclusion, I cannot close uh, this uh, presidential plenary debrief chat without uh, thank you all for attending um, our broadcast and reminding that each plenary session 
is garnished with this uh, interactive uh, broadcast. So enjoy your uh, participation to ICT 2021 New Orleans uh, meeting. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Raquel. Please connect, communicate, and translate, and have fun. <laughs>